Ever since he first came to prominence in the 1970s, Harrison Ford has been able to sustain a career as one of the biggest movie stars in the world. But given his natural charisma and charm, this should come as no surprise to anyone, as from day one, it was always clear there was something special to him. Still, with so many movies under his belt, it can be quite hard to narrow down the best of the best. But hey, not to worry, because today we'll be looking at the top 10 Harrison Ford movies of all time. Number 10, Clear and Present Danger. Felix Cortez has sold you out. His next move is to murder you, your family, and to take over the cartel. Where's my tape recorder? By 1994, Harrison Ford was already well established after having had two full decades of starring roles in some of Hollywood's biggest hits. So when a film adaptation of Tom Clancy's Clear and Present Danger came along, it only made sense that he would be cast as Jack Ryan, a CIA agent drawn into an illegal war being fought against the Colombian drug cartel. And here, he would get to show off all the gruff charm he'd developed over the prior years something which eventually convinced the ratings board to drop it down from an R to a PG rating without any changes having to be made. I did not sign up for this. This is somebody's bullshit political agenda. Number 9, Witness. It might be one of his lesser celebrated hits, but Harrison Ford's portrayal here of John Book a cop tasked with protecting a young Amish boy who's witnessed a murder is one of his better performances. Sure, the movie around him is great too, but it's really Ford that steals the show from the rest of his co-stars with his gripping performance. So good a job did he do, in fact, that, despite previously having appeared in some huge box office hits where he gave critically acclaimed performances, this would mark his one and only Academy Award nomination. Listen, Samuel, I want you to hop like your farm as fast as you can and stay there. Do you understand me? Are they gonna kill you? I'll be all right. Number eight, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Being the second release in one of the most powerful movie franchises in the world, Temple of Doom is probably the most underappreciated of them all. And that's because with it being so much darker than the original film, it turned a lot of people off at the time of its release. In fact, it would be so disturbing that it's since been accepted as the one which necessitated the arrival of the PG-13 rating. But of course, in telling the tale of Indy's attempts to stop a thuggy cult and rescue a bunch of child slaves they have working for them in the process, it's really no surprise this is the case. But that doesn't mean it's not enjoyable. No, quite the opposite. In fact, as, when compared to many other movies of its era, it's held up very well over the years. And it's defiantly deserving of a rewatch if you haven't seen it in a while. Number seven, The Fugitive. Are you suggesting that I killed my wife? Are you saying that I crushed her skull and that I shot her? Sure, it started off life as a hit TV show in the 1960s, but it wasn't until 1993 that The Fugitive received another level of popularity altogether. And that's because it was then that the film adaptation, starring Harrison Ford and Tommy Lee Jones in the roles of Dr. Richard Kimball and Deputy U.S. Marshal Sam Gerard, respectively, was released. Here, in fact, portraying a young man wrongfully accused of killing his wife, Ford would get to know his character so well that he and his co-star were trusted to improvise much of their dialogue with one another, leading the whole thing to come across more natural. Number 6, Blade Runner. Leon, how old am I? I don't know. Few movies have ever had the cultural reappraisal that 1982's Blade Runner by Ridley Scott has in the years since its release. And that's because, after being critically reviled upon release, thanks to some pretty bad editing decisions, a director's cut would eventually bring the whole thing far closer to its original intent. Of course, the real question many still have about this movie, though, one which tells the tale of Ford's hunt for a group of rogue replicants is, when it comes to Rick Deckard, is he a replicant or not? And as it happens, to this day, Ford and Scott still disagree about this, with the former believing he's human and the latter believing he's an android. I need the old Blade Runner. I need your magic. Just quit when I come in here, Brian. Number 5. Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. No, 
Elsa. Elsa, don't move. It's ours, Indy. Yours and mine. Elsa, don't cross the seal. After two successful shots at portraying Indiana Jones, Harrison Ford decided to make it a hat trick when, in 1989, he returned for the third Indy adventure, The Last Crusade. And this one would see audiences introduced to the titular character's father, played by Sean Connery, for the first time as the two spend the movie searching for the elusive and mythical Holy Grail. So it was just as well it turned out to be as good as it was then because, in order to direct this one, Steven Spielberg would have had to drop out of two other major projects released the year prior, with these being Rain Man and Big. Half the German army's on our tail and you want me to go to Berlin? Into the lion's den? Yes, the only thing that matters is the grail. Number 4. Star Wars Episode VI – Return of the Jedi Well, don't look at me, pal. I just said you were a fair pilot. I didn't know they were looking for somebody to lead this crazy attack. Not content with just playing one of the most iconic characters of the 80s in Indiana Jones, Harrison Ford would also take on an arguably even more famous role when he was cast as Han Solo in Star Wars. Of course, by the time 1983's Return of the Jedi came around, he'd have already done so twice before, meaning that this time, he was fully tuned in to what the roguish smuggler turned resistance leader would do as he helped to bring down the Death Star all over again. What many aren't aware of, though, is that Ford almost didn't appear in this one at all. No, after growing tired of playing Solo in both A New Hope and The Empire Strikes Back, he'd actually request his character die between films after he'd been frozen in carbonite. It's just as well he was talked out of that one then, isn't it? Well, why don't you use your divine influence and get us out of this? Proper. Number 3. Raiders of the Lost Ark The first, and still the best indie adventure, sees George Lucas harken back to his days watching old serials on TV. And this, then, would allow him to create a thrilling adventure tale of the titular hero's search for the Ark of the Covenant. But what makes it a classic, of course, are all the iconic moments which happened during its two-hour runtime, with some of the most memorable being Harrison Ford getting chased by a giant boulder or having to duel with a local swordsman. And while this latter scene was originally supposed to see an elaborate sword fight take place after Ford was struck with a case of food poisoning prior to filming, he'd suggest it be changed instead to a great gag where he simply pulled out his gun and shot his opponent. Number 2. Star Wars what are you looking at? I know what I'm doing. If you had to choose one movie which changed the game more than any other in the 20th century, Star Wars would be a pretty safe bet. And a large part of the reason for this is the excellent performance given by Harrison Ford as Han Solo, everyone's favorite anti-hero. That said, just about everything else from this one is perfect too. In fact, whether it be Luke Skywalker's quest to find adventure, Darth Vader's plans for galactic conquest, or Princess Leia's attempts to get revenge for the destruction of her homeworld, audiences would love it so much they ended up making it one of the biggest hits in Hollywood history. What you may not know, however, is that, on first release, the movie did not have the Episode 4 title it now has. No, it would simply be titled Star Wars, with A New Hope only being added retroactively. Why didn't you outrun him? I thought you said this thing was fast. Watch your mouth, kid. You're gonna find yourself floating home. We'll be safe enough once we make the jump to hyperspace. Our number one pick is... Star Wars Episode V – The Empire Strikes Back Let go, please. Don't get excited. Captain, being held by you isn't quite enough to get me excited. Sorry, sweetheart. It could never really be anything else, could it? No, Indiana Jones and Blade Runner may be great, and Episodes 4 and 6 of Star Wars are obviously classics, but that said, nothing can compete with probably the best science fiction movie ever made, the second installment in George Lucas's space opera franchise. And why is that? Well, aside from letting Harrison Ford shine all over again, it also further expanded the world by introducing audiences to new characters such as Yoda, Lando Calrissian, and Boba Fett. On top of this, we also get arguably the best twist in film history when it's revealed that Darth Vader is Luke Skywalker's father. And if this shocked you when you first watched it, you weren't alone because, aside from Lucas and James Earl Jones, the voice of Vader, no one else in the cast knew it was coming ahead of time, as that line of dialogue was secretly recorded at a later date. Looking at the film's ratings, we find that The Empire Strikes Back received a strong 8.7 out of 10 on IMDb.com and a similar 82 from Metacritic, 
Rotten Tomatoes, on the other hand, would go one better by giving it a very impressive 94% on the tomato meter, with an even higher score of 97% given by the audience. You fixed us all real good, didn't you? My friend. <laughs> And there we have it, the top 10 Harrison Ford movies of all time. No doubt you have your own list, so be sure to let us know in the comments below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and get alerted of our next video. We'll hope to see you soon!